I'm back with another sweet PowerPoint uh, from, from my room while I have COVID. Uh, you know, I think a lot of advice for students tends to be like condescending or comes across as nagging. Uh, you know, it tends to be like, you should be doing this, you should be doing that. Uh, and, you know, I want to avoid that because, you know, students are already very busy and you can't add more things to the timetable without picking something else to get rid of. Um, yeah, I uh, hope, hope this is useful. Um, a little bit about myself, uh, you know, just so that you can decide if my experience is relevant for what you want to do. Uh, I've been working in animation in Ireland for a bit over five years now. Uh, behind me here are the jobs that I've had and before that I went to Duncan of Jordanston College of Art and Design in Dundee, Scotland. So first of all, you know, one of the biggest things I want to say in this video is just that anything you don't know, any skill that you're lacking in, you can learn, you know, even if it's difficult and it takes ages, it can be done. Uh, yeah, I, I would really recommend learning by doing lots of small but finished projects, uh, you know, maybe like two months, under 30 seconds, that sort of thing. Uh, I think it's the best way to get a lot of experience quickly. Uh, it will give you material that you can use in different portfolios. Uh, you know, the satisfaction of completing little projects will, you know, help you stay motivated. And also you can avoid some of the pitfalls that come with, you know, those like year long student film projects. Uh, you know, you, you can't expect for your early projects to be your masterpiece, you know, uh, and you can run into motivation problems if you do go in expecting that. Uh, just while we're here, also just don't be afraid of animating with threes and fours, you know, don't do ones unless you absolutely must. Uh, similarly, you know, speed really just comes from experience, so don't worry too much if it takes you weeks and weeks to do a few seconds at first. Uh, and, you know, if you don't have much experience, it can be hard to estimate how long things will take for you. Uh, what, that makes it risky if you're doing, you know, a big project. Yeah, there's some common art advice that I kind of uh, disagree with. Uh, you know, one of them is the classic, like, don't draw anime. Uh, you know, I think if you like it, do it and try to get good at it. You know, you can learn the same things that you would learn if you were doing more Western styles, you know. Uh, so. Yeah, if you had a perspective class and you turned in stuff like this, you know, the teacher wouldn't say, don't draw anime. Uh, you know, so I think that advice really comes from just like misunderstanding or ignorance. Uh, the, the other thing is, uh, don't compare yourself to others. I think there is a healthy way to do that, actually. Uh, you know, it just maybe takes a little bit of maturity to A, Realize that you're not dumb if you feel you're behind your peers. And B, don't look down upon uh, people that you perceive as behind yourself. Uh, I think it's more about, okay, how did this person learn so fast? Like, what exactly did they do with their time that got them where they are? Um, you know, it's more about that than it is like, oh, this is a better or more talented person. When you're studying, you know, doing your sketchbook, whatever, I think it's good to attack your weaknesses, you know, say you're really good at drawing like wacky extreme expressions, distorted characters, that sort of stuff. You know, maybe try drawing cars or buildings or furniture. Uh, you know, you won't lose the thing that you're already good at and you might learn some skills that you can bring back into your comfort zone. Uh, Comfort zone's not always bad. Uh, when you're doing finished projects, you know, portfolio projects, things that you want to show people, you know, I'd say totally just do your own comfort zone. Do what you're good at. Uh, use it to your advantage. Uh, I, the way I see it is like, you know, you're going down your own path and you're just kind of picking up different tools to bring along with you. 
when it comes to things like their fundamentals or their principles, I think that your point of view on them is really key for how you learn them. Uh, try to remember that it's not just like a checklist of qualities that an artist needs to have in order to be acceptable. Uh, things like perspective, composition, posing, these are properties of your work that you can adjust to make your work look like how you want it to be. So it's not a chore that you need to get through, it's a helpful thing that will help you get to where you want to be. Uh, the better you get at controlling those properties, uh, the easier it's going to be for you to make your work look how you want it. Uh, Glenn Vilpu puts it kind of nicely, uh, no rules, just tools. Personally, I find that solid drawing, uh, volumetric drawing, draftsmanship, whatever you want to call it, um, you know, learning to freehand little wireframe forms and build characters out of them, that's really been both the most difficult thing to learn and also the most useful. Uh, so I would really recommend working on that because if you can get a solid rough drawing, it makes everything else afterwards make a lot more sense, you know, whether you're doing line art or shading or painting, whatever. Another thing that I wanted to touch on a bit here is just how and why to use anatomy. Uh, as a student, I thought of anatomy as like, it's the thing you need to know to be good. And I think that attitude is still kind of around today. You use anatomy knowledge to either fix issues in a figure or animal drawing, and you can also use it to enhance a drawing that you've already blocked in. Uh, for example, by tensing muscles or relaxing them to create weight and force. Uh, the better your understanding of the thing that you're drawing, uh, the better your drawing is going to be. Uh, and, you know, we usually draw people more often than anything else. Uh, I think it's better to just get really good at the simplified forms, simplified skeleton, and then, you know, maybe months or even years later, uh, plug anatomy knowledge into that. Uh, or, you know, even just like look up more detailed reference during the process of the drawing uh, whenever you need it. Uh, you know, definitely don't make my frustrating mistake by just jumping in the deep end way too early. Uh, software is kind of a tricky subject because it's just always changing. Uh, when I was coming into animation school in like 2012, uh, Flash was probably the most common program uh, and then by the time I was graduating in like 2015 uh, most studios had already moved to Toon Boom. Uh, I think probably probably just the biggest hurdle uh, is just going to be getting expensive programs when you're a broke student so uh, I would say get the trial versions of the most common programs you know do a tiny bit of work in them just so that you can say that you have experience with them and then, you know, just go back to whatever one you're most comfortable with or whichever one you can afford. Uh, programs like Toon Boom Harmony, Maya, Blender, uh, they have a steep learning curve uh, because they're programs that can do like a ton of different jobs uh, and each one of those jobs is pretty complicated uh, for Toon Boom, which is, uh, you know, the one that I know. Uh, I'd say maybe go and get a pre-made rig and just do like a walk cycle or something just to figure out how to do it. Um, programs that are only for frame by frame, you know, hand-drawn animation, uh, they tend to be pretty quick to learn, you know, mostly very similar, just maybe with different shortcuts and the tools might have different names from program to program, but uh, you can learn them quickly. Uh, you've probably heard this before, but reels should be short and neat with subtle or no music. Uh, you know, only your best work and, you know, make sure your email contact is very easy to find. Uh, you know, it's tricky to pull together your best shots because you can get very attached to things that took a lot of work. And, you know, if you're advancing fast, you know, work that's six months old might not even hold up anymore. <laughs> but you are better off just cutting things that don't hold up with the rest, uh, even if it makes your reel very short. Um, 
podcast, I'm of the opinion that it's better to make little projects for their own sake rather than making projects for a portfolio. Uh, not everybody agrees. Uh, but, you know, I think you do more and better work uh, if you have like a purpose and a story for it. Uh, what should you expect from the industry? Uh, you know, this really varies massively uh, between countries and disciplines. And, you know, advice can get like very obsolete, very fast. Uh, you know, for now, I basically just search for your country in the Salty Animators doc. Uh, and there's also this one uh, for animation, VFX and games, jobs. Um, as for like networking and that sort of thing, I always find that networking events are like kind of useless and very awkward. <laughs> uh, I find that like, you know, the pub or a cafe area of a film festival is actually just way better. Uh, you know, there's no expectation to act like you're in a job interview or like pitch yourself. Uh, you know, that sort of thing, which uh, I hate. I think it's hell. <laughs> you know, just don't ask someone you don't know to swing a job for you. You know, try not to like go fishing for validation from your your animation heroes or whatever. You know, you'll you'll find that your heroes are just kind of like normal people. Uh, and actually it's kind of suspicious if a professional is like kind of gatekeeping and expecting students to look up to them or whatever. Uh, I, I really don't like that. Um, it does feel kind of validating, you know, when you first get your, uh, you know, your first professional paycheck. But I say, you know, don't actually put any serious validation on whether someone is professional or not. If you are struggling to land a job, uh, yeah, I mean, it took me ages to finally get an animation job after I graduated, so uh, I know how it feels. It's hard, it's discouraging, it can feel unfair, but you can do it. Uh, keep it up with patience and persistence and, you know, take care of yourself for the long haul. It can feel like your future is out of your own hands. But here are some things that are within your control. Make the best portfolio or reel that you possibly can. Update it as you get better and just cut work that you've heard wrong. Uh, another thing, recruiters usually want a specific portfolio for the job. Uh, I know your instinct is probably to cast a wide net and you want to show them that you can do anything, but uh, I think it is better to be specific. Uh, it's another advantage of doing those like small but finished projects is that you get the material that you can use to make separate portfolios for like animation or storyboards or backgrounds, whatever. And again, yeah, uh, sh show off what you're good at and anything that you don't know, anything that you're lacking in can be learned, uh, can be figured out. Um, if you need to fluff your CV a bit, um, just go into more detail about your student projects. Uh, tell them about the programs that you used and how you collaborated. Uh, also, you know, you can just outright ask for a test in your, your cover letter, your first email, whatever. Uh, show them that you're keen. And, you know, if you don't get a certain job that you were hoping for, uh, you know, especially if you, if you did a test and everything, um, Try asking for feedback, you know, you won't always get it, but it can be uh, pretty useful. Just on a personal note, you know, if you are struggling to find work right away, do not think less of yourself or your art. Uh, you know, I'm the same person there, five-ish years into work than who I was when I was looking for work, uh, just with more pen hours <laughs> put in. Um, you know, you shouldn't look for validation from being hired at a studio. Uh, it's, it's no good to put your opinion of yourself into the hands of someone that you don't know. Uh, and, you know, you can't really guess the reason for hiring this person over that person. Um, even if it really is the case that your portfolio or your test is kind of weak, um, you know, you can just learn and practice more and try again next time. It doesn't mean that you're stupid or untalented or, or anything like that. 
you know, primarily the work that you make on your own should satisfy your own creativity. And if you do that, you are an artist, uh, whether it's your job or not. Um, working at the studio is, is not always creatively satisfying. So pleasing yourself is, is something to prioritize, you know, and, and just one, uh, one more thing, just do not work for free, uh, unless, you know, it's for yourself. Uh, your time is just better spent doing your own homemade work than it is working for someone who, you know, literally does not value your work. <laughs> Take care of yourself. Um, one of the biggest things that I want to talk about today is, you know, it's animation. It takes a long time by nature. So, you know, even if you're looking at it from a purely cold productivity standpoint, it's better to have a sustainable routine, uh, you know, whatever that means for you. Uh, in my opinion, you will do better work. You will get more work done. Uh, you will feel better about it and you will avoid getting sick. If you do a normal amount of work steadily, then if you go through intense periods of overworking followed by crashing, you know, I'm talking about just like eight hour days if you don't have a day job and maybe, you know, several hours if you, you know, if you're squeezing it in after work, just, you know, try hard during those hours and then go do something else. Um, also, you know, just try to get a good chair, make sure that your workspace situation is working for you and, you know, not giving you physical pains or anything like that. Okay, the, the gist of this whole thing is just don't freak out. You can get your work to where you want it to be. It just is hard and it takes a long time. So, you know, make a sustainable routine and just keep at it for as long as it takes. Um, and, you know, try to keep it fun and enjoyable. <laughs> uh, if I do another video like this while I'm isolating, I think it's maybe just going to be about animation learning resources that I like or that I found useful personally, uh, even though, you know, maybe some of it is probably obsolete by now. Uh, okay, anyway. Bye.